Welcome to the Virtual CPA Success Show for creative agencies, the go-to resource for agency owners looking to scale their business. Join us every week to stay ahead of the curve and position your agency for future success. All right, Jody, very excited for this episode we just recorded. I think our listeners are going to get a lot out of this. I know um, I was... I almost forgot to stop the recording because it was getting so interesting, but I think that our listeners are definitely going to go a lot of different directions with this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Logan covers a lot of, a lot of great little nuggets there that uh, I think every agency owner can, can get out, especially um, in times like this, where you really need to really focus heavily on marketing and figure out how to, how to make that marketing train, you know, continue on Uh, relying on referrals is great, but uh, when things get tough, uh, you know, so does uh, so does that that dries up. So having a good marketing process in place is is wonderful, and 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 make make sure that you stay to the very end because uh, Logan has a uh, really great state of the agency uh, guide that he's willing to share with uh, with everybody out there with a little over five hundred uh, people in the industry, or agencies in the industry of all different sizes, and and kind of getting. Uh, best practices and, and, and so forth from so re- really great tidbit at the end um I, and i definitely think you're gonna enjoy this uh, episode yeah I agree. I agree that state of the agency um report is what is talked about a lot among almost every person i talk to is why why isn't this being done it sounds like they have a lot of resources they talk to a lot of people in order to create that and like i said i think you're everybody's gonna get a lot out of this one you know i think that any agency that's listening to this you have a lot of talented people in-house that can help you with having a great marketing plan and it's a shame that not a lot of companies are using it so i think just listening to this podcast will fill a page of notes for you so um enjoy and excited to have a uh, logan on we might bring him on again because this was a really good um good podcast so uh enjoy all right everybody welcome to today's episode uh very excited for today's topic when this uh email came through and i I read the idea i was like this is exactly what we need to talk about so i'm really excited to talk with uh logan lyles from teamwork.com his his idea was you know he talks to a lot of marketing agencies just like we do and it's um surprising how many of them the amount of time they spend in their marketing resources themselves. So we're really going to dive into that topic and how you can spend a little bit more time on an area that you're really smart on. So um, uh, Logan, welcome to the show. Um, Love to hear a little bit about your background and kind of how you got to where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for the intro. As I like to say, it's about time that the cobbler's kid having no shoes is something (laughs) that we do away with. I hear that so often, uh, especially from marketing agencies. Uh, I was just at Inbound, as I know some of your team was a few weeks back. And I asked a bunch of agency owners, if you had an extra $10,000 a month, where would you spend that? 40% of them said we would invest it in our own marketing. So I think it's something that a lot of agencies are thinking about, but not quite sure what to do, where to go with limited resources, especially as they're facing constraints in maybe as the labor market has changed, as the macroeconomics have changed around us, and they're kind of getting squeezed from both sides. And so Mm -hmm. hopefully we can talk about some things that will be approachable and make it a little bit easier for them to solve that common problem. How I kind of got into hashtag agency life Mm -hmm. um, and and marketing is kind of a a wandering journey. So I I graduated college in 2008 with a journalism degree. So obviously Mm -hmm. anyone who has been in the workforce uh, since then knows that, hey, great recession, great time to hit the job market. Also (laughs) great time to hit the job market as journalism was going through some major disruption, major contraction. Uh, I'm out in the Denver area in Colorado and it was within six months after I graduated, where one of the major papers, the Rocky Mountain News, uh, mm-hmm. that was known here in this space for, for so long, shut its doors for good, right? And that sort of thing was happening. So I probably got into local, regional B2B technology sales and mm-hmm. kind of sold my way in of like, hey, I, I was a journalist. I know how to start conversations with people. Maybe I could sell. First two years, hated sales, absolutely hated it, um, almost quit. But I, mm-hmm. I heard that if you can make it into two years in B2B sales, then you can you can really build a career. And so I ended up finding my niche in sales, but I was always the salesperson who really loved marketing from my journalism mm-hmm. roots. Yep. Um, and I like to, to find ways to educate folks. And I saw kind of the rise of what HubSpot was doing with inbound marketing and content marketing. And so in 2018, after about 10 years in sales, I got the opportunity to join an agency myself, a B2B podcast production agency called Sweetfish Media. And I took over sales from the founder there and 
jumped into consulting with in-house marketing teams on how they could use a podcast for uh, their marketing. So I spent four years in various leadership roles. We hit the Inc. 5000 list a few times uh, just outside the Inc. 500, but mm -hmm. had some great growth there. And that was really where I kind of dove full bore into marketing. Uh, and fast forward a few years later, mm -hmm. now I'm serving in a marketing role at teamwork.com. I host a podcast for agencies. Um, and so I'm passionate about helping agencies um, from my time of learning the challenges of what it's like to run, grow, scale an agency. And obviously my passion in sales and marketing, that's an area I see where, as we said, there's a common challenge, but I think there's a common opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lo Logan, to cut you off there real, real quick. I mean, it, when you said you work, you work for a podcasting company, it made a ton of sense because if you look, if for those that can't see the video, <laughs> Logan's picture is like perfect. It's got the it's got the background, it's faded out. He's got the he's got the mic in front. It, it just looks like the perfect um, podcast. I mean, we, we interview a lot of folks, and and they, you're definitely dialed in. You know, not, nice job there for sure. I appreciate it. He's though. making us look bad, Jody. <laughs> yeah, Jamie on the other hand has got a crooked picture. <laughs> I can help you guys level up for sure. No I need to. You need to help him. I'm I'm perfect, of course. So and, and I'm down in Colorado Springs, so you can just drive down here and help me. So I'm not too far away from you. So you can All right, just drive we'll down do a little studio makeover. Up pictures, yeah. Extreme makeover podcast studio edition. There That's right, go. exactly. Give me a bookcase. Exactly what I need. <laughs> no, Logan, your, your topic uh, definitely hits home. Um, you know, we 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 work with a lot of agencies, and and it seems like. Uh, in conversation with those folks, they always put their marketing always at the very back of everything. So it's it's sales, sales, sales. We got to drive marketing, but when it comes to marketing their product, you know their website, their everything, it seems to get a back a backstage. And I'm I'm kind of curious on why why do you think that happens? Because I I can tell you with the finance side, it, it happened to us too. You know, finance side, we're great with finance. It, it took us a while to really develop and build our own finance side because we were really work, really vision on clients and really driving that sales side. But I'd love to get your take on on why that's first of all an issue in, in the marketing because it is for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, will, I love to start with why as Simon Sinek mm -hmm. says, right? So I think that's a great question. I think it's two reasons. One is limited resources, right? If you're listening to this and you're an agency and maybe you sell to SaaS companies, it's like, you're not venture backed, you're bootstrapped. You don't have, you know, all this, uh, all this marketing budget to put into paid ads and all these other things. Um, so I, I think some of the solution is getting scrappy and finding the levers where you don't need to pull as much to get as much return out. I think the second thing you just hit on there is especially for agencies that are involved in any sort of marketing, whether that's brand or performance marketing or um, different sort of marketing. When you look at your internal resources, who are the best people that can do the, the best mm -hmm. here? They're going to get offered up as tribute to the clients first and foremost, mm -hmm. right? And carving out time when it could go to billable hours, whether you bill by the hour or not, right? That's mm -hmm. time yep. that is at a certain hourly rate that you should be accounting for, right? We're talking mm -hmm. finances on this show. Yep, usually yep, yep. you mm -hmm. should yep. be, uh, then it's hard to say, no, that's going to be dedicated here where we're not billing for anything. And so I think it, the answer is similar there. How can you get the most bang for your buck out of those hours from the, the people that could contribute the most to your marketing? I think the upside is that, you know, I host a weekly podcast a release uh, on Thursdays called the agency life. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things about agency life is that the people are the product. The people are the place, as I heard an agency owner say recently on the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's opportunities without doing some of the same things that you see with big budgets from B2B SaaS companies that you can lean on that fact that the people are really the product. The people can be the face of the brand, even more so in agencies because of the nature of client service work, that there's an opportunity mm -hmm. to leverage that with some things where, again, you can kind of pull the lever a little bit and get an out outsized impact uh, if you lean into those personal brands on your team. Yeah, no, I agree. I think one of the things that I'm 
that I'm drawing to right now is a lot of clients that I'm working with and a lot of companies we're talking with are, mm -hmm. are a little worried about the way the um, economy is right now. I think the sure. clients are taking a little bit longer to close and mm -hmm. just the, the outlook for the next three to four months, there's a lot of companies that are a little worried about it. And one of the things the last time this happened, we talked to a lot of our clients about this is, this is a good time. As long as you have a good cash reserve and as long as you're in a good place financially, this is a really good time to invest in things like this. Um, so especially when it comes to like team members, you know, if you're, if you're looking for that head of marketing and, and people are understaffed or underutilized right now, maybe it's time to, to make that move because ultimately it's going to bring you more revenue. Is that, is that advice that you would follow or what about, um, you know, the timing of, of making that change? Yeah, I think one thing that I saw on LinkedIn the other day, I wish I could remember who posted it so I could give them a proper shout out. But uh, it, actually, it was Nick Bennett with uh, Tax. So they he is kind of longtime in-house marketer. Now uh, their firm is offering basically kind of on-demand GTM services, not necessarily a standard agency, but kind of fitting in that client service delivering marketing services. Mm -hmm. And one thing that he pointed out as an opportunity was that right now companies are seeing adding headcount um, and investing in full-time employees as a riskier thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's more of a commitment. And so I think one thing in this economic environment that does actually play to our favor with all the things agencies have stacked against them right now is that companies are looking for ways of where could we contract for this? Where could we hire for an agency? Where could we have kind of a fractional support here where we need the help, but we don't have the budget? Or even if we do have the budget, we're worried about making the commitment to a new FTE. So I think that that's one thing where the timing actually is good uh, for, for agencies right now to invest in their own marketing um, and to, to find new pipeline with those customers where they might you know, be thinking, oh, they're, they're not going to be, you know, increasing spend here. They might be shifting some of that full-time employee budget over to uh, being allocated to agency work where they could step in and help. And, and if you don't have someone who is constantly thinking of stuff like that, you're going to miss the boat. Right. And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's the, the point of what you said is that like everybody gets so stuck in their ways when they don't have someone thinking outside the box and thinking of what's the best way to approach my marketing. But if you have someone who's thinking about that all the time, working on all that time, you're going to be ahead of these curves and, and yeah, you're going to have some, bad months, but you're going to be able to turn around a lot more quickly because you're going to see trends like this, or you're going to see opportunities because someone's always got their eye on that ball. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit on it there too. A lot of agencies, when it comes to marketing and sales, the founder is still very heavily involved. A lot of it is what I see is there's growth through word of mouth and referral. And I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of word of mouth and referral, but if you don't have a systematic approach to that if you don't have something someone thinking about how are we generating new pipeline how are we positioning ourselves um mm -hmm. then you're gonna see some real peaks and valleys and that can be tough especially when you're bootstrapped you you know you don't have you're not venture backed like these SaaS companies that maybe you sell to mm -hmm. yeah because when, when you look at companies the strong ones have a strong sales process and a strong cash position. Those are the two really that I see are the really big positions. They not only sell, but they're profitable enough where they can actually build cash and keep cash in the company. Um, when they don't have one or the other, I see that they, in, in times like a recessionary period, they seem to fall. Um, and, and you'd mentioned that too, that, hey, you, you can't really rely on referrals alone. And they, a lot of times it's pretty easy. You know, referrals are coming in, it's super easy to re rely on them. But if you rely on referrals, that can dry up pretty quickly because you know it, it could and and I think the idea is having that sales process, that sales pipeline, that engine in place. And with a marketing firm, you know that could be a do or die situation for those, especially if they're looking for the big the big fish all the time. And uh, you know having that sales process, I, I think, is important. But also having that sales process, even when they're super busy, they don't slow down. They continue to build on that sales process and you continue to bring on. The next big fish, you know, that or the next, you know, small fish to, to fill the fill the pond up. Your, your thoughts on that? I mean, am I am I off target on that, or are you, are you seeing that as well? No, not at all. Um, one of our most downloaded episodes on the podcast I host, Agency Life, with Dev Basu from Powered by Search, he talked about this very simple HubSpot workflow that his team has set up. That he's like. 
just setting this up is going to revive some old deals is going to give you kind of raise the bar a little bit, raise the, the, the mm -hmm. floor that you're standing on. Cause like you said, it, going off of the peaks and valleys, it, it's good in the good times, but if those valleys are too low, you can be in some serious trouble. So what can you do to just kind of raise the floor? So those valleys aren't quite as low. And the advice that Dev gave in the episode was just creating kind of a, what they call a lost lead reviver. So oftentimes when you're selling uh, consultatively, which most agencies are, it's not a product, it's not self-serve, it's not kind of product led growth. How can you, when those people say, you know, uh, marketing budget got frozen or mm -hmm. something else got prioritized. This is pushed to, to next quarter. Most founders, or even if you have a dedicated salesperson within the agency, don't have that rigor of when are we going to follow up? How are we going to re-engage? Um, so he gave some very tactical things and just some basic HubSpot automations and workflows that you can trigger when you move your deal over to here to, to stalled, or uh, even if you move it to closed loss. Um, and you can create some very quick automations that if especially if you're a HubSpot solution partner, you should be able to uh, activate very quickly within the agency. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think the interesting thing is, is like, you know, it's the math is pretty simple, right? A lot of companies we work with have a 25% win rate or somewhere around there. Right. So that means you need four clients or you need four leads to get a win. Right. So like all you're trying to do is chase down those, those strong leads. And so what you mentioned right there, even if it brings you in one lead a month, that means each quarter you're adding one additional client. Right. So you really got to, again, we're, we're math people, we're, we're numbers people. So we always bring it back to something like that. But again, it, ultimately it comes down to is what do you need to do to grow your business? And so um, I guess I'm curious, you mentioned that as a, as one strategy, Strategy, but where, if you're a company that's listening to this podcast and you're like, you know, they're exactly right. We don't spend enough on our marketing and you've already given some ideas, but the, my big question is, is where would I start? Like, what would I do as first steps in order to really start investing in my own marketing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, there's two pieces. The second piece I really want to touch on is some tactical things that you can do, even if you don't have a dedicated person and you don't hire that director of marketing within the agency, mm -hmm. how can you kind of yeah. do it by committee very successfully and without a ton of investment in tools or paid uh, channels, those sorts of things that worked really well for us at Sweetfish when we activated what we called an employee evangelism program on LinkedIn. So I'll, I'll yeah. get to that in a second. But first, what I want to touch on is is, you know, kind of like we kicked off this conversation, starting with why in this conversation, before we talk about how to, to market your agency, we should talk about what the heck you're marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had a great conversation with Nick Bennett, who was previously at a very well-respected HubSpot solution partner agency impact that merged with Marcus Sheridan's group. He's now on his own uh, and he's founded a consultancy called Harness and Hone, and he helps agencies with what he calls niche design. And mm -hmm. this line that he said has just been burned in my brain for the last couple of weeks since I interviewed him on the podcast. And he said, most agencies try to market the solution and convince clients that they're the best. So that's that might be the solution of the channel or of the tool of like a HubSpot or something like that. Mm -hmm. What they should do is market the problem and then they become the default solution. Mm -hmm. But what most agencies aren't super clear on is what is the problem that they solve? Because they kind of do everything for for everyone. They work with some manufacturing companies over here, some tech companies over there. They do some website design. They do some paid ads, right? And so often the conversation around niching down has just been about, well, what industry do you want to niche down into? Or maybe what channel or maybe a combination of, of both. And mm -hmm. his suggestion was really get clear on the problem that you solve and then start talking about that problem because then people will come to you as the default solution. And both of us called out, you know, Chris Walker and Refine Labs, an agency that's grown tremendously over the last couple of years. I don't necessarily think about them for the the paid LinkedIn campaigns that they run for companies. And, and that I think about the problems that they talk about how, you know, the, the modern B2B marketing playbooks are, are broken. The attribution uh, methods that we've been using in marketing don't really work anymore. And so I think that if you are going to go down this path of what I'm suggesting with a LinkedIn evangelist program or something like that, before you start marketing on any channel, LinkedIn, email, mm -hmm. uh, any sort or whatever you're investing in, you need to get clear on what the heck it is you're marketing. And mm -hmm. I would suggest, and I know Nick would as well, is get really clear on the problem that you solve and start talking about that. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll just pause there and see if you guys have any thoughts on that before kind of jumping into the tactics that I'd suggest from there. Yeah, I think the interesting thing with that is, is the nice thing about what you just talked about is you have a lot of people in house that you can have this conversation with, right? Like you can bring, you know, some of your best people in and be like, okay, let's talk about what we offer as a service. And A, those people know what you offer as a service and B, they're really smart marketing people. So like you could have a really good internal round table to really come up with what that solution is. And again, without actually moving someone into that role, you could say, okay, let's brainstorm as a team and probably come up with some really good ideas because you have the resources already in house and it's going to take, you know, a handful Mm -hmm. of time just to do it. But I think that's my thought of listening to you to say what you just said was, man, these companies are missing the boat here. Mm -hmm. They're not using the resources they have in house a couple times a month just to talk about what their marketing strategy is strategy is i'm curious jody mm-hmm. kind of what you what you thought no, about what he said same thing yeah same thing we, we, i mean it, it's kind of like the why you know why us because we're, we're going to solve that problem for you and you're kind of indirectly selling yourself because you're presenting the problem and, and talking about the problem and and may, probably many different ways and so I, I love the idea of making that big and bold at the very front of your marketing material your website whatever that might be and then linkedin and then uh uh, going from there with, uh, you know, you being the solution without really, there's no really sales pitch at that point. It's more like you're the thought leader because you brought that information in to them, brought the problem into them, and maybe even give them the solution in the same regard. And hopefully they can do it themselves. Maybe they can't, and then they can come to you um, either way with questions or, you know, a, a helping hand type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the leg up that agencies have is that you have so many of these smart people who are talking to clients all day long, right? If you're a a SaaS company, for instance, you've got to go from marketing and you got to go ask the salespeople and the CS people, can we listen to your calls? Can we, can we hear what you're talking to customers about? And if it's kind of an outside sales team that, that becomes really tough. And so marketing can be very removed from the voice of the customer and those interactions with the customer in an agency, you've got people in client service, you've got people in all sorts, you know, every role and everybody's wearing different hats within the Mm -hmm. agency, at least I did. And they're talking with customers all the time. And so my suggestion would be very much like what you guys uh, said there, start a weekly round table where you just start discussing what were the problems that our customers are facing that came up in conversation mm-hmm. this week? They can be the problems that our customers just signed up with us for to solve. They can be the problems that were presented on a discovery or qualification call or a strategy call with a prospective client and start talking mm-hmm. about those. And here's what I would suggest you do. Start doing that regularly. After you do mm-hmm. two or three times, start recording those. You can just record those on Zoom or you can take out a a license of 20, 30 bucks a month of StreamYard like we're recording on here or I use Riverside.fm for recording podcasts. Very inexpensive tool will help you record higher quality audio and video if you use something like StreamYard or Zencaster or or Riverside.fm. Just do it in a roundtable discussion and record the whole thing. Don't worry about the long form because you might bring up clients. You might say stuff about, oh, I shouldn't have said that on that client call or whatever. But I guarantee you, you will be talking about client problems. You will be Mm -hmm. kind of exposing your expertise, as you guys said earlier, just kind of by default. Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking about the problem and even if you're not like, here's the solution, the fact that you intimately understand the problem is what your clients are looking for. Mm -hmm. And so start that kind of informal get together about talking about client problems that you've Mm -hmm. solved or that you're strategizing with them on move to starting to record those. And guess what? You probably have team members on your team that could take the transcript of that and turn that into blog posts, turn that into Mm -hmm. written posts for LinkedIn. There are tools, um, or if you have team members on the team that can turn that into short form video clips, short Mm -hmm. form video is huge with the rise of TikTok and now YouTube shorts trying to compete there and see a lot of short form video. At least I do myself performing Mm -hmm. really well from myself and others on LinkedIn, which is probably one of the main channels your buyers are on. On. So sure. start that conversation, just hit record and don't worry about the long form. Don't worry about, oh man, if we only had the resources to start a podcast or a weekly <laughs> live stream, right? Because you're never going to do it, right? Yeah. Um, it's going to, it's going to take forever because there's going to be other campaigns and things that you're doing for your clients that are going to, that are going to take precedent, but just set up that regular rhythm. You're probably already having these conversations anyway, record it, 
but just record the long form just so you can pull out the short form content. And then, uh, and then my next recommendation would be, don't just push that out through all the company channels. Don't just post that on the LinkedIn company page, the, the LinkedIn Instagram feed, or excuse me, the company Instagram feed. Um, but see from your team who is willing and able to spend a little time getting active on social and use that regular roundtable recording session to break that into micro content and then share that out through the personal brands because it ties back to what we were talking about earlier the people are the product, right? If you can mm -hmm. showcase, we're the people who understand the problem, who are talking about it. You have the ability to create multiple thought leaders who are kind of mini evangelists for the brand within mm -hmm. the agency that, you know, bigger organizations, oh, okay, we got to launch employee advocacy program. We got to get right. everybody checking the boxes. Mm -hmm. This the HR wants to get involved and, but no, it really sits over in marketing. You don't have those problems. If you're like, you know, five, 10, even 30 or 40 person agency, like you can do what the heck you want. So mm -hmm. you actually have a leg up there over those companies with bigger budgets to do stuff with your marketing and especially with organic social that they don't have the freedom and the flexibility to move as quickly as you do. Yeah. I yeah, love Logan, the way. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, Logan, my, my hands went, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of blew up a little bit there because we, we, we kind of do a very similar thing. We meet our CFOs meet every Friday. We mm -hmm. talk for an hour about what's going right, what's going wrong, all the different things. Why we haven't videoed that, uh, recorded that, and shared that with the marketing department to slice and dice, like you, like you mentioned, is is beyond, I guess, you know, kind of silly on our part. You know, it's one of those one of those obvious. Mr. Obvious just hit me in the face there um, with a bat, and I just realized it was a bat. But uh, it, you know, anyways, it, it's one of those it's one of those deals. I mean, I, I think it's great, and I think the second part you mentioned about it is not just pushing it through the traditional company feeds, you know, having it pushed through the, the specific CFO feeds, you know, the, you know, if, if Jamie's got, if he's a CFO, he's bringing it up, bringing a question like that up, why not put it on his feed? You know, little snippets, like you'd mentioned there, whether it's, you know, LinkedIn or whatever the social media content is. So I think that's brilliant. I mean, I, I think if anybody gets a little tidbit from so far from this, I think that is just, that's ingenious, uh, you know, ni nice, nicely worded, nicely thought of. Yeah, definitely. And I think the other part too, and I think this is, this is how we're using all that video is, is internally. So everything you mentioned was externally, which makes sense because we're talking marketing, but also like, you know, with the way the world is going and especially with all the AI data is so important. And so that's one of the reasons that we're recording every one of our meetings, we're getting transcripts of that and you can use it as internal wikis. You can use it as mm -hmm. internal sound bites. You can use it as training videos. And so the more information you have, the more you can use it for. And I, we use a um, app called Firefly right now um, for recording our videos. And what that allows you to do is actually take the sound bites and send them to people. So if we're sitting here talking for an hour and a half and we talk about everything and, and we're in that meeting that you just talked about where everybody's talking about their problems that they've seen and how they've solved them mm -hmm. and, and really talking through that. If someone comes up with this really great solution to how to solve a problem, I can take that sound clip, send it to someone else and be like, hey, guess what Logan just solved for their client? You might be able to want to use this, this on your client. And out of that hour and a half meeting, I'm just taking a two minute mm -hmm. sound bite, sending it to Jody and being like, this might really help on that client you were telling me about. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. that's the key like I think every company and I think agencies with the Easy. amount of technology they're in are already thinking about this but with the wor way the world is going the more information you have and the more you have documented the more you're going to be able to use this stuff and so now is the time mm -hmm. to record everything you do document it and then you can you're, like you're going to be able yeah. to use it for in so many different ways yeah mm -hmm. can I ask a quick question because this is very much in line with something we're doing in our own marketing at teamwork.com that I think applies to our audience too um, mm -hmm. you guys are using fireflies. We use gong.io. There's a oh, lot of, of gong, call yeah. recording mm -hmm. tools that are less expensive for agencies. You've got yep. a tool called fathom. I hear talked about mm -hmm. a ton. Yep. It doesn't yep. matter the tool, but the application is fantastic. They or initially were really developed for sales call coaching. And like right. the mm -hmm. idea that the sales calls were this black box and managers yeah. can't really see in and coach and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. But there's so many more applications. If we just kind of clue into them, like we're talking about here. Do you mm -hmm. guys use those to record ongoing client calls with, with your CFOs or account managers or whatever? Yes, yeah, so that's that the, is? that's the next step we're starting to go down, right? Okay. So yeah. we are starting to record all of our client calls. And like you said, as the director of advisory, I can think of like 20 things I want to use them for. One is, yes. is training, not only like a new CFO, Hey, let's look at this call. Let's go over the game tape together, but also 
if I have a CFO who's been doing it for 12 years, I could use their video and be like, hey, look at this. This is how this person yep. leads their financial statement meeting. Not necessarily how you need to do it, but you can watch them do it. You can watch how they do it. So yeah, like I said, I think information is so important now. And again, we've been recording a lot lately, but we've made it kind of not mandatory, but I'd say in the next week or so, if we were rolling this out to make it mandatory, yeah. that everybody's recording everything they're doing because there's just so many different ways that yep. we can educate, we can, um, like I said, there's just so many different ways to break down these well, tools. And like you said, is, yeah, marketing, marketing, is, marketing is, the, is, is the big part of it too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You bring up a really good point about coaching. You know, Mark Roberge in the sales acceleration formula talked about kind of the, the common problem with sales, whether you're bringing someone on in an agency or a service based business like yours or our audiences here or uh, a SaaS business is you bring on a new salesperson and they shadow one person and they think that that's how sales is done. That's how they think the client service is done. Um, mm -hmm within that organization. But if you're recording them all, then you can say, Hey, here's Joe. He's really good at this. Here's Sally. She's really good at, at this piece and kind of get the, the best from the, the other existing folks. So I like what you called out there, the call recording in an agency setting, any sort of client service work, you're able to not only just coach and improve, but you're able to take the examples and share those more broadly. The other thing you can do, I love how you guys are sharing, hey, we're going to make this mandatory. Uh, the <laughs> conversation there is probably similar to what we have at teamwork.com being a project management and client operations platform with time tracking built in. That's why a lot of agencies use us to not only manage the tasks and look at the project health and those sorts of things, but to track their time and manage utilization rates. It's yeah. kind of a similar conversation we always hear. Oh, the team doesn't want to track time. You might hear the same thing. The team doesn't want their calls recorded, but I think you guys are on the right track there of explaining. This is not just like finding the bad apples and pointing it out and, and right, slapping exactly. your hand when you don't yep. do well. There's mm -hmm. marketing implications. There's um, improving our service mm -hmm. implications. And one thing we've started to do to tie it back to why I was excited to kind of go down this rabbit trail of call recording mm -hmm. in client service work, you know, you make a really good point that, you know, data is really important. I would say that even more important than that today is trust. And mm -hmm. especially when people are buying from an agency, I've been there where I was selling and I would see the prospect lean forward and be like, Logan, this has been a great conversation. I think you really understand our strategy. Who are you going to hand me off to if we sign up with you guys? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I just had that conversation yesterday. <laughs> right. Um, and there's this little bit of understandable skepticism and, and lack of trust. And so mm -hmm. how can you address that with what we're talking about here and with marketing your, your own agency uh, throughout the sales process? And I would say if you're using Fireflies or Fathom or Gong or a call recording tool like that to start recording not only sales calls, but your ongoing client calls. When a client is raving about you after you just did that QBR and they're saying something, pause right then and just be like, hey, Joe, what you just said there was a really good quote. Thank you for saying that. We're actually recording this call, as I mentioned at the top. Could we take that transcript and share that on social and maybe even chop that portion of the video out um, and share that? We can share that with you so that you can proof it before it goes out. And guess what? Now you've got a very authentic customer mm -hmm. testimonial, right? So often with agencies, we think, oh, we have to do a case study. It's going to be a big ask. We've got to do this. We've got to dedicate someone to write it and shoot the video and all that sort of stuff. And then it never happens, right? You start recording these calls and you find those moments. Guess what? You can move faster. The customer might be flattered because you turn something out quickly and it showcases them uh, and you. But also it could lead to that greater case study. And then finally, on the note of trust, it's something really organic that they weren't kind of primed and prepped to say. And we have all seen those commercials or the testimonial videos. It's like, did they say that or did the marketing team write it for them? <laughs> right, 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 right. If you're pulling that right from a call you just had with them and then going back to our strategy earlier and saying, hey, we got this great quote from from a client and they were actually willing for us to take this 20 seconds out of the video and optimize it for social and push it out. Can three people post this video, like one this week, one next week, one, one the other? Then you put that on your YouTube channel. And the next time you're having that client conversation where they're like, can you guys really do that? Who are you going to hand me off to? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to send you a 30 second clip from a client that looks just like you. It's over on our YouTube channel. 
and now you've got that and like no huge client testimonial case study, right. you know, process to go through, just bake that into your regular day to day. So mm -hmm. same thing, kind of extracting the thought leadership out of your internal team and using, not using the team in a bad way, there's a better way to do it, but working with the team to distribute that mm -hmm. also just baking it into your regular conversations with clients to turn mm -hmm. that into content that can help you generate more trust in your marketing and your sales efforts. Mm -hmm. no, that's 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 so great and yeah again i'm taking notes here of other stuff i'm thinking through i'm like yeah there's just there's just so many ways to use this and i think going down this this rabbit hole of recording obviously is gonna give topics and i think a lot of people are probably listening being like oh you know what else i can use this for because that's when you're talking i'm like oh you know what else i can use this for and i wrote wrote it down and just like i think the topics are endless but i wanted to um say we are right here on time so i want to make sure we still have time for our fun questions so um we're gonna we're gonna jump over to that but um you know, the, the fun question is, um, you said you're from Colorado. And so anyway, from Colorado, the first question that comes up is a, what's, what's your favorite outdoor activity? And so I know, I know Jody's not from Colorado, but Jody definitely has spends time outdoors. So I want to, I want to start with that question. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can spend, you can spend a day outdoors. How, how are you spending that time? Or you can spend a couple a weekend outdoors. How are you spending that time? So I'm going to, I'm going to start with you, uh, Logan. Well, you know, being from Colorado and for anybody outside of the area, they might think, you know, skiing, snowboarding, that sort of stuff that I would go to, but I'm actually going to go to a summer activity that I don't do as much now, uh, since I've had kids, they're getting a little older, so maybe I'll have some more time for it. But I really think golf would be the one that I would go okay. to. Obviously we don't get year round golf like they do in Arizona or Florida, but the little known thing about Colorado is that our winters are really not like New England winters. We have 300 <laughs> days of sunshine out here. So as much as the winter sports are great, summers and even those mild days in, in the fall and occasionally in the winter are really nice for, for getting outside, whether you want to go hiking or you want to hit the golf course. So that's where I'd go with that. And how many times you've been at a Colorado golf course and like you're getting ready to tee off and you just have to stop and be like, oh my God, look at that background. And you just have to get your camera out and be like, this is like the prettiest hole I've ever seen. So I played that's, golf in high school. And so I got to play a yeah. bunch of beautiful courses and I didn't yeah. realize like how many amazing courses I was getting to play for free as a teenager. For sure. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The, the free part's the key. <laughs> All right, Jody, what about you? Oh, heck, a whole day. Um, man, I, I, I just, I, I would love to go fishing on a fishing boat. Um, a lot of fun there, just kind of hanging out. Um, not really kind of mindless thinking, uh, golfing, like, like you'd mentioned golfing is uh, I love to golf, not great at it, but love to golf. And again, to me, that's mindless thinking as you're beating yourself up in the head because you can't hit that perfect score all the time. Um, but that's just a lot of fun hiking. Probably not so much. So I about died hiking up in the, we went to Jackson Hole for the, our team retreat and don't really want to do that again <laughs> necessarily. Um, but, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Shoot. We went parasailing. That was a blast. I, I would do that again in a heartbeat. Um, shoot. I could just name a lot Canyoneering. of stuff. Canyoneering. Don't forget about that. Canyoneering. Oh, that was, oh, that was beyond cool. Yeah. Have you ever, you ever done that before Logan Canyoneering? No, no, I haven't. Oh, Jamie, tell them about it. Was, it. it was it was pretty awesome. It's it's basically the the practice of going into a canyon and then going mm -hmm. out of the canyon. But basically, while you're in there, you're doing um, hiking, you're doing uh, propelling, you're doing water jumps, and so you're basically mm -hmm. just going down the river and doing all these different um, activities. And so, yeah, we did that with uh, my wife and Jody's wife um, a couple of years ago, and it was it was a great time. Um, so yeah, that kind of leads me to to mine, and I'm I'm similar to you. Yeah, you think Colorado, you think skiing and snowboarding, but for me, that's a lot of work, right? Like getting my snowboard and getting it on the top of the car and getting out to the mountains, sitting in the traffic. So I'm definitely a summer a summer guy in Colorado. I love backpacking. That's that's my favorite. And my kids are now old enough to the point where I can take them with me, and we can you know find a find a backpacking trip we're going to go on for a couple of days and, and really just get away from it all and have no phones and just really be out in nature and I, if if i can't go backpacking it's definitely um hiking we we try to get away every time we yeah. have two hours we're gonna we're gonna go for a hike and we went for a, a nice one this weekend and got some cool pictures and so that's just what yeah definitely my my activity. especially this so, time of year where the <laughs> colors are changing and everything yeah, it's so good right. yeah yeah mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think this was a it was a great episode. We might, might have to have you back on. I think we could have probably talked for for three hours on on this mm -hmm. subject and other subjects. But I, I think that the amount of information you gave us was amazing. And I want to give you an opportunity to just um, talk about one last thing. I know we talked a little bit about your um, a report that you've you've worked on that I think our listeners will absolutely love based on the conversations I've had with them. So if you want to um, plug that, and then uh, after that we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up. Yeah. Well, you know, as the saying goes, comparison is the thief of joy. Um, and I think that's true on the personal side. 
side, but from a business perspective, comparison can be really helpful. And a lot of agencies, you know, they might talk one to one about kind of opening up their books and sharing what's really going on, how profitable are you really with a few key folks, but finding mm -hmm. that out from folks who might compete with you or who are a little bit further along and maybe they don't want to share all those secrets, it can be tough. And so teamwork.com recently partnered with Audience Audit, a research agency that focuses on research for agencies. So very meta and they have a lot of expertise in the space, just like you guys. We mm -hmm. We surveyed over 500 agencies globally on things like profitability, their utilization rates, how are they tracking time, how are they thinking about AI or not, all of those sorts of things. And so we've compiled all that into a research report called the 2023 State of Agency Operations. Um, I'll provide a link to you guys. We can put that in the great. show notes slash episode description here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many great insights that came out of that that I think agency owners would be really interested interested and intrigued uh, to check that out. Also, uh, we mentioned the podcast that I host every Thursday called Agency Life. If you're an agency owner or leader, or you're working on the front lines of hashtag agency life, uh, look us up on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you do your podcast listening. So those would be my, my two places where you could dig a little bit deeper if this conversation was valuable. Perfect. Yeah, love the conversation, Logan. Uh, this has been uh, really informative, a lot of great nuggets out there uh, for all the listeners. Uh, and uh, this should be one of our better podcasts, I, I think, that we've had in a while. So I appreciate it. Thank you guys yep. for having me on. This has been fantastic. A lot of nuggets for us, too. And I'm sure Jody and I are taking a lot of – I know I can see it in his eyes already. Jody's going to be like, hey, can we meet for 30 minutes after this and talk about some <laughs> stuff? So I think uh, you've, you've, you've got me some work on my plate. So I appreciate that as well. So <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate the time today. Enjoy this podcast. Visit our website, summitcpa.net, to get more tips and strategy for achieving business success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry.